Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm super excited because we're trying something that we haven't done in a long time um, and that is some uh, Pessoa lunging today. Um, so I'm pretty excited because my plan today is to um, see if the Pessoa can help us um, work that canner once again. Obviously we are trying, it's been uh, months now that we're trying to get that smooth canner. I'm sure all these efforts are going to be super worth it. Um, it is a very hard gaze for us to work on it just because you want it so ever smooth um, you really have to um, keep on working it so today we're putting the Pessoa on it's been I think uh, almost a year we haven't used that Pessoa system so um, Hazel was not uh, very thrilled about it she's never really thrilled about the Pessoa training um, but we um, I have to keep on basically working with her and pushing her a little bit um, so yes, they will back a little bit at first just because there's this trap right there at our back legs And it's a little bit annoying when she's trying to do like trot work or canter work or in our case gallop So obviously it's not meant for galloping or anything like that, but um, it's been a hot second that we've used the tool So I'm just letting her buck it out until she's kind of done with it So one of the things that I used with Hazel sometimes is when I see she's bucking a lot and she's not having a great time, I just get her to change her sides and that usually helps to, to kind of help her brain a little bit to just uh, figure it out and just calm down a little bit. So she's been offering me a great canner with the actual Pessoa system so I'm just going to change here the settings on the the tools on the Pessoa system. So there are different positions that you can put with the ropes. Um, I'm not going to go over in detail about which one we have and what it does, but basically by changing um, the way you position the ropes, it's going to help work different muscles on the horse. Um, and that's why I'm changing them as we go, just to see which one is going to be the most comfortable for her. Um, and also which one is going to help us uh, achieve what we want to achieve. Um, in my case, this time I just really want to work all muscles, so I'm going to be changing um, the positions of the rope quite often. Uh, but as you can see, after bucking a couple times, um, she just goes along and just gets the work done. So I'm pretty pleased actually that um, she calmed down and she was able to focus and get that done. Um, she is definitely uh, muscled properly. So she's a, she should be able to um, use the system to her advantage. It's just that it's a bit of a frustrating thing for her to um, have the little um, strap at the back. Um, another thing that I want to mention is that she has today, she has the cavisson on uh, with the system. So she does not have a bridle with a bit in her mouth. And that is just because um, we haven't used the system in a while. And I just want to make sure that it is... Um, as smooth as possible for her and I just don't want to make it too hard too quick um, so this time around we have the cavisson set up um, and that allows her to have her nose in the air a little bit more than if she would have the bit um, but uh, next time we'll be using the actual bridle and then she won't have that um, like leverage she won't have that opportunity so it's just good to kind of get her brain a, a little bit into the um, working with the tool and not fighting it so it's just more about that for this time and then next time will be all about business
So changing the alignment of the tool once again, um, that will help us to work this time. Uh, I believe it will work her um, back and muscle, her back legs, um, and that will just give her some muscles um, there and help her uh, for jumping as well as for cantering. So as you can see, she's just doing a really good job. She's cantering pretty, pretty nicely. Um, I was really really pleased with how she did with the whole session overall but also uh, muscle wise um, the way that all the muscles were worked um, and one good indication to see what muscles were worked is once the workout is over um, you can see either the sweat patterns that will help you determine what worked um, you know the most and also the, the veining so her veins So adding on some uh, difficulty here, we're going to have her um, on the Pessoa and also doing Cavalettis at the same time. Um, and this is to help her as well figure out um, how she can do um, or position her body to do jump as well. Um, as you've been able to see in the previous uh, videos, we've started doing some low jumps um, and that is just to help her really build that back end muscle. Um, so, so far so good. She's being a really, really good horse. She is very willing. As you can see here, she's just hopping over um, and she's just doing her job. Um, but I really want to work that kind of uh, back end muscle that will give her the um, elevation she needs to have the lightest scanner. And that's what we're striving for. So my objective here with this tool is to get Hazel to first take the jump um, or take the Cavaletti as a jump and um, it doesn't matter at which gate at this point, it's really for her to activate her core and balance herself the proper way so she can get over it. Um, and so it's basically like kind of a core workout if you will, um, as well as top line uh, workout. So it works both the, um, the core or the ab abdominal muscle of the horse as well as their back muscle at the same time um, and that's why it's really really great as a tool to kind of be able to get her to do that um, and she's doing it willingly as well like she's not pushed uh, that much into it she just really goes for the center and and, um, and jumps with all her will So here, really important to get them to do it on the other side. Um, as you can see, it's a little harder for her on this side for some reason. Um, you know, horses are a little bit weird that way. They have uh, both side of their brain works differently a little bit. Um, and so it's really important to kind of get both of them um, working so you can actually um, have symmetry in the muscle building, but also uh, make sure that the horse doesn't uh, spook or freak out on the other side and just as strain as the um, as the side that you did previously. So you don't want to make sure that the horse is basically balanced in their brain and in their body. Um, so what I do when she doesn't want to really go through is I show her there is nothing to be afraid of. Um, either I'll go over it with her, which I've done a couple times, but I know that she can do it. She just needs to. Um, 
kind of figure it out on that side which seems to be a little bit harder for her to understand but eventually you'll see by the end of it um, she gets the, the gesture the gist of it um, and she's gonna take it willingly as well it's not um, a big deal it doesn't move it doesn't hurt so it, there's nothing really to be afraid of it's just more consistency that she has to work on So because she's been doing so great, um, I'm super happy to end the session there. She was also getting pretty tired. It is a really um, hardcore training, um, as the title says. It's uh, pretty hard on the horse just because, first of all, with the lunging system, um, they have to um, make sure that they engage their core at all times. Um, and it also really works their muscle. It's a bit like going to the gym. Um, so I just decided to end the session there. I'm really really happy with how it turned out Since it is COVID and we have um, some people that want to use the arena um, What I've been doing these days is um, once we're done the, the workout I will put her blanket on and then I will go hand walk her myself Outside to get her to cool down. Sometimes we just don't have the opportunity to just get everything we want to do all at once in the arena just because people are waiting um, to use it as well and with social distancing uh, it's a little bit hard to manage everybody's you know um, schedule and things so I just try to be as uh, polite as I can and I just uh, exit the arena when the workout is actually done um, and then this way I can just get to do um, some cool down on the outside which I like um, so this is her usual paddock so um, never mind the mess here um, that's what she's uh, usually uh, goes into when she's um, she's turned out during the day and I just love to use it just because it's fenced and in just in case something goes wrong um, she's not gonna go anywhere um, so we're just walking in circles here it's a bit like a hot walker um, but I'm the I'm the hot walker machine actually I'm just walking her in circles at first I'm going a little fast and then I ask her to slow down um, when I feel that she's ready to be um, to relax and then I do it on both sides obviously um, but that's something that we enjoy doing at least it just gives her an opportunity to just spend some time together um, just relaxing and enjoying the weather um, just on the outside like that so I feel like it's a great idea and then like that people can just exercise the horse use the arena and I can get to finish off the workout properly and make sure that the horse is properly cooled down So once we're done, um, as per every weekend's routine, we um, spent some time doing some grooming as well. Um, because it was a rainy day, um, or very humid day, she had quite the sticky, kind of humidy fur. Um, so it's just a little harder for me to work and just clean her that way. It's easier definitely when the horse is dry, but um, it's always good to just make sure that um, I clean off her skin brushing it, curing it, and once again, of course, it is shedding season, so there's still a lot of hair coming out of her, believe it or not. Um, so I can't wait for this <laughs> this summer coat to, to come in. Um, I hope that it's as beautiful as the effort that I've put into it, um, to make sure that it's very, very shiny, um, but I'm sure I won't be disappointed just judging by the uh, previous years. So just going over here with the curry uh, comb, um, just to remove all the, the dirt that we have, the mud, um, that's on the outside um, depending on what kind of schedule we're on for the arena and stuff sometimes I groom her before we actually go in and sometimes it's after so in this case here um, the arena was free so I just went ahead and just put the tack that I needed to put and we went on with the lunging but she is quite dirty as you can see all the dirt falling off so it's really important that I spend the time uh, needed to do that so I will go ahead and give her a nice curry brush, give her some moisturizer in there as well and then I will um, do the tail, um, change the tail bag and just rebraid her mane as well.
I hope that you guys enjoyed this video um, and I hope that you like our hardcore training. Um, it's not something that I would recommend for everyone. Um, your horse definitely has to be fit enough to be able to do it. As you can see here with Hazel, it's not an issue. She's built like a tank and we've been uh, working her consistently for the past uh, six to eight months um, and we've been doing great. So it's just a little tool to help us um, work the muscles that we need um, in order to have the smoothest scanner. So I feel like we're inching closer to it. I just really can't wait to show you what the scanner is going to actually uh, work out to be. So I hope once again that you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching um, our video and being a part of our journey. Um, give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you again. Have a good day. Bye bye.